I haven't got a speech. I didn't plan words, I didn't even try to. I just knew that I needed to get here, to stand here, and I knew I wanted you to listen, to really listen, not just pull a face like you're listening. A face that says you're feeling instead of processing. You pull that face and you poke it towards the stage and la di da, we all sing and dance and tumble around. And all you see up here is, it's not people. You don't see people up here, it's all fodder. And the faker the fodder, the better it is because fake fodder is the only thing that does anything anymore. Fake fodder is the only thing we can stomach. Actually, not quite all. No, real pain, real viciousness that we can take, yeah? Yeah, stick a fat man up a pole and we'll laugh ourselves feral because, hey, we've earned the right, we've all done sell time and he's slacking the scum, so ha 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 at him. Because we're so out of our minds with desperation that we don't know any better. All we know is fig fodder and buying shit. Yeah, that's how, we, that's how we speak to each other. That's how we express ourselves is buying shit. Yeah, I have a dream. Yeah, the peak of our dreams is buying a new hat for our doppel. A hat that's not even there. It doesn't even exist. It's, it doesn't even fucking exist. Show us something real and true and beautiful. You couldn't. It'd break us. Um, we're too numb for it. Our minds would choke. There's only so much wonder that we can bear. That's why when you, when you find any wonder, you, you, you dole it out in meager portions and only then till it's augmented and packaged and pumped through 10,000 million screens and it becomes a series of meaningless lights and we ride day in and day out, going where? Powering what? All tiny screens and tiny cells and bigger screens and bigger cells and fuck you. That's what it boils down to at the end of the day is fuck you. Fuck you for sitting there and slowly knitting things worse. Fuck you and your spotlight and your sanctimonious faces and fuck, fuck, fuck you for taking the one thing that I had, that I had anything close to being real about anything. Fuck you for, for oozing it around and crushing it into a bone, into a joke. One more meaningless joke in a kingdom of million. Fuck you. Fuck you for happening. Fuck you for me, for us, for everyone. Fuck you. The thought of never seeing my wife again scares the shit out of me. That and the things that make your skin crawl and the hair stand up on the back of your neck. Now there is one thing I think I'll remember to the day I die. Yeah, it was back in 91, just when my unit was shipped out to Kuwait to mop up the last pockets of resistance. Me and this young fellow, Eddie Oswald, decided to get a tattoo done to commemorate our first trip into the desert. So anyway, me and Eddie, we went and had a few drinks, we had a lot of drinks, and we went to the tattoo parlour and I got a desert rat done. And Eddie, being Eddie, well, he wanted something with a bit more meaning. And being a bit of a believer, he said that his soul still belonged to God. His flesh, well, his flesh was way beyond redemption. And it was up to Satan to save his skin. So we got this fucking great laughing devil tattoo right on his ass. <laughs> Anyway, about six weeks later, we were making a regular sweep around the Iraqi border and Eddie, poor fucker, triggered an anti-tank mine. It's white, blinding, lightning flash and a fucking deafening crack. And by the time we picked ourselves up off the deck, Eddie was, well, he was gone. Just bits and pieces of him scattered around this big fucking red circle, 100 meters. I'll tell you something, lads, it really puts things into perspective when you have to scoop up your friend with a shovel and stick him in a bin bag. The thing that really did our nuts in that day was when you'd come across a piece that you'd recognise. A bit of ear. Toe, a nose, a tooth. But the thing that really freaked us out that day was when Left Hand Charlie came across a piece with a tattoo on it. I mean, everything else was burnt to a crisp, all mulched up, pulped up, but not this bit. This bit was perfect. So I guess you could say Eddie was right. The devil did save his skin, just not all of it. Or you could say he was just unlucky. Either way, it taught me to keep a very open mind.